welcome to the week and show. My name is Kenny. And I'm Deb. And we are just so glad to be here with you guys. And for, ladies. And ladies for episode number two. Right on. So we just want to keep you guys up to date and topical about what's going on. We're coronavirus going around. Uh, trying to stay sane. Trying to stay sane. Yes. I know that uh, our kids, you know, going to school, at home, stuff like that, they're done. Anybody done? Yeah, I think they want to fire the principal. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so, me and him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, us. Um, anyways, but other things that have been, you know, like driving kids, people insane is like haircuts. Right? Have you seen the haircuts that are going, that people are doing to their hair? Well, check this out. Oh my gosh. When the quarantine started, I was in the same predicament. That is right. And so I thought, well, if I'm gonna be under quarantine, let's let my hair grow. Now is the time. Now's the time. Now's the time. So check out this video and watch my hair do experience. If we hop in the beans, is that okay? Is it okay if I call you my Prada Bay? I ain't no player, I just got a lot of bay. But let me tell you, I like you a lot, bay. I wanna start at the top and the bottom, bay. Now you want to shoot with the red at the bottom. Oh. Just saying. Not amazing. So, oh, yeah. We had to go back to normal just to keep it normal. I think getting a haircut was the wrong thing. Now, growing it out, super great. Wouldn't y'all agree? That's right. I would have lost weight during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> it may have walked you instead of you walking it. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but man, had there been some haircuts crazy, crazy. on TikTok that we found. Mm -mm. Check these videos out. I just did a bad thing. I regret the thing I did. And you're wondering what it is. I'll tell you what I did. I did a bad thing. said that we had been on TikTok. Deb's been on TikTok more than me. That's not true. No. That's no, not true. Not even true. So, Are you kidding me? Let me tell you. He's like, oh my gosh. Anyways, so we said we would do a dance contest or a dance challenge last week. And so Deb and, <laughs> Deb and I, we did dances. We did TikTok dances. So Hey, I just want to clarify that I never said I could dance. Watch this. I'm telling you, I, I guess they're they're afraid of our dancing. You can't hang. I guess not. <laughs> it's too bad because we were we we're going to give it some good prizes. I'm just saying. So we'll hold on to that $25 gift card uh, for another challenge. Hopefully, you guys will chime in and actually do the challenge. Who wants some money? Hey, maybe we should just challenge each other and we can just give each other gifts. Well, well, I like that idea. So Deb and I are going to do another TikTok dance off. Uh, <laughs> no. Anyways, we have Jerome and Shaniqua back. We sure do. We do. Yep. And they are hooking us up with some pancakes. They're making Ooh, pancakes? pancakes? She told me, girl, I'm going to hook you up with some pancakes. Wait, did she say it like that? <laughs> Maybe that's my little Girl, I'm going you up with some pancakes. <laughs> well, because your pancakes are round. Oh, so that's yeah, right. She okay. likes it her finger like that, yeah, you yeah. know? So I I'm, I'm thinking that's what it is, you right know? On. Yeah, so I'm thinking they may even taste good this time because those tacos, are sketchy. Horrible. Mm. So check out the, the Jerome and Shaniqua bringing you quarantine delights and they're making mm, pancakes. <laughs> Welcome to 
walking back in. We back again. Yes, we are. And today, I am actually going to hook us up with my Granny Opal's Black Southern Pancake Recipe. Except, this will have a little twist on it because we're under like quarantine. This. And so we're calling it the Pancake Quarantine. Quarantine mm -hmm. Pancake. That's right. Yes, so we are. We're a little softer because we still don't know whose How house this who is. Whose house is this? We don't know. I, you know, it, kitchens are just coming up in the shorts these days, and trying to find a place to actually do this, it's just been super hot. So, so we just find houses. That's right, and this house was unlocked, it sure was. So we thought, you know, we'll just sneak in real quick while everyone's asleep, and we'll just make our pancake and we'll just go. And pack up and leave. That's right. So, mm -hmm. let's do some quarantine pancakes. Let's do some quarantine pancakes. First of all, Just so you know. All right, so let's get started. Okay, first, we gotta have our eggs. Our egg makes everything fluffy and stick together. We so, gotta, how we, we gonna crack it in there? We gotta crack it in there. Okay, crack I'll, I'll crack it in. I'll but you it. can't get no shells in there. You can't. Okay. I, can, can I trust you? No. I don't think so. <laughs> so I'm gonna crack it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you go like this. So we got That's right. one, yeah, egg. one egg. Okay, you gotta whip that up. Cause I know you like to whip things up and shake. Yes, yes you do. I whip okay. my kids, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. I oh, whip oh, them mm -hmm. kids. Okay, next you gotta whip it up really, really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna... You gotta switch, you gotta switch. If I had a switch, I'd be able to whip it up. Oh, okay. I think you're gonna switch one arm to the next arm because your arm's getting a little tired. No, I, I know you need a little workout going on. I'm mm -hmm. good. Okay, okay, the next we need to do is put add some milk. Okay, you keep you keep whipping. Wait, what kind of milk is that? Some might, I might be in the, in my bottom my stomach. Lactose later intolerant? On. Well, don't you fret. Cause let me tell you, mm -hmm, my granny Opal, she said, honey, you only use almond milk because you get some extra calcium in there. That's right, extra calcium. They so we're gonna no pour it up in there. Yes, they did. My grandma lived on a farm, Miss Opal, back in the southern country. Let me tell you, they be milking them almonds. That's right. Okay, you got that almond milk in there? Okay, next, we're gonna add some vanilla. Hold on, but what if, this is quarantine pancakes. This is quarantine pancakes. What if they don't have no almond milk? Could you use powdered milk? Uh, I don't think you should use no powdered milk because it, it will make it weigh it down. You need something big and fluffy and yummy. So you gotta have milk. Don't use water either. You can't use water. Well, water, you just, it doesn't give that fluffiness and that good old taste. You mm -hmm. use water. Okay, so we'll have to have some vanilla. So just add some vanilla up in there. Uh-huh, some vanilla. One, two, mm-hmm. Pass a good punch, it sure does. Okay, but yes, again, right. quarantine, if you run out of vanilla, could you use like some soy sauce? It you looks you the cannot, same color. You, you can't use soy sauce because it acts real salty. And we're not about the real salty stuff right now. See, my, my granny, up she would turn up in her grave. Let me tell you what, mm -hmm. okay. she would. Okay, next. We gotta, we, we, we gotta, we gotta add some um, protein. So I, I got here some, some peanut butter. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna grab me some peanut butter up in here. That's right, because you know, gotta have that protein to make you nice and strong. You wanna keep your little bicep, your big bicep. Mm -hmm. And oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you use like a piece of chicken? Chicken is protein. Okay, you can't use chicken in this recipe, except you probably can use maybe some tofu if you really want some pack the punch of Wait, protein. Put somebody's toes up in here. No, some protein. You said toe. No, protein. Ooh. No, toe, pro, protein. Toe jam? No, not toe. Here, hold on. Mm. <laughs> Right, here we go. So we got our protein up in there, mm -hmm. and we got to add just a tiny bit of salt, just a splash, uh huh, because it, it has to like make it all taste good. Mm, there you go. That's all we need. Just a that was salt. More like a rainy drizzle. Well, you know, it just it just adds a little bit of yumminess to that. Okay. Okay. Then we have to have some. If you ain't got no salt, could you put like Lori seasoning salt in it? I, that's why you not in the kitchen. Okay. That's why I'm leading the show and you are just my little stir man. Yes, you are. So now we're gonna have some uh, soda, pa powder soda, soda powder. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do one, two, makes it extra fluffy that way. Mm -hmm. What kind of soda is that? It, is it's that like powder Sprite soda. Or it's Coke? So soda powder. There you go. Okay, that's to keep it fresh. Makes it all fluffy. Look, it's already starting to flufferize. Yeah. It sure is. Okay. So you can put now, very seasoned salt in here, some Coke. Okay. No now powder. we're going to have some sugar. 
you gotta have some sugar because that mm -hmm, that's what tastes is so yummy here we go okay all right let's add some sugar up in there mm -hmm. okay so in each, each kind of sugar you can use powdered sugar you can use the brown sugar you can use sweetened sugar you can just do any kind of sweet sugar that you have up in your house that's what you use but yeah. right now i only have the the granulated sugar cool so that's what we use. That's what we use. Okay. If you need some sugar and you run out, just give me a call. I'll just stick my my body up in there. I'll give you a little bit of sugar. This is a, a this is a, a a thing for kids. Okay. This is a show for kids, and we can't be having a bit up in here. You better leave it back at home with your wife. I don't think so. Okay. The next, we need we need some fiber. So my mom, my granny, oh, well, she said, here we Honey, go. You gotta have you some fibers, and that stuff can work its way down, and you be clean all day. So we have some Always dates. talking about that. The That's back why part. we got some dates going up in here. So woo! Mm, mm, mm. Got to mix that up. Mix, mix. Okay, now we're gonna have some bananas. Cause she said, "Honey, you gotta have some potassium all up in here." <laughs> because you know what? No bruises. You you gotta you say gotta, that word again. But that potassium. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, we'll how to spell it uh -huh. right here. So we gotta put that up in here. I'll just slice it all up and just toss it inside. Mix it super yummy. And then she said, honey, you gotta have some blueberries. Anybody like some blueberries? Mm-hmm. I like me some blueberries. This is quarantine pancakes. What if you ain't got no blueberries? Could you uh what, what if you substitute blueberries? So we're, we're gonna get some blueberries up in here. Okay. So so blueberries, blueberries helps uh look at all that. Oh um, yummy blueberries. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I've done it now. My 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 opal. My granny, oh, I'm telling you, she will be proud of me right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next we're gonna have is, oh, see, th th this is where we get creative. She said, honey, you gotta make sure that you go into your pantry and, and for the little kids to, to get up on there and, and eat up your pancakes, you gotta add some color. So you know what, I looked in our cupboard today and guess what I found? I found us some color. Look at all that pretty color. Woo pretty color. I think that's a pretty, Ooh, and it smells like pretty color. Smell that. Smells like a rainbow, a flavor. Smells mm -hmm. like a jar fruit. Ooh, yes. So we're gonna put some of that in there. Oh, baby, look at all that. Yummy, yummy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after we got all that settled, okay. Next, let's put our flour up in here so we can get this thing started. All up right. in here. Up, up in here. here. All right. Here we go. A heap of flour. Another little small little heap of flour. Okay, mix, mix that all up. Mm -hmm. Oh, we forgot an important ingredient. I'm about to lose my mind. Oh my goodness. We gotta put some oil up in here because if we don't put oil, it's gonna stick to the grill super bad and we'll be able to flip the pancake. So we're gonna put a little bit of oil up in here. Here, let me get, let me measure this out because we don't wanna put too much. That's right. Just one, just two tablespoons. Mm-hmm, that's good. Oh, look at that. That's just not gonna stick to the grill. No, it won't. The okay. we're about camping. Right? Okay. Good. All right. Here we go. Okay. Now we're gonna go to the grill and serve us up some pancakes. Let's go to the grill. Let's go. All right. Here we are. Are you ready? Just put some of this stuff on the grill. Ooh, wait. Look at the lumps and clumps. Can you just put just a little bit here, mm, just like so, right there? Put some right here. Mm -hmm. Evenly distributed. Ooh, look at that color too. The kids are gonna come home and they're gonna be like, honey, mama, I got me have some of that quarantine pancakes. That looks super good. Mm, I'm telling you. Now, what you have to do, you see the bubbling? You gotta make sure it gets all bubbly all over the place. Mmm, child, here we go. That's here good. Is our quarantine pancakes. Look at that fluffiness. And that brown, nice little color on top. It's got a good color. Perfect, perfect color. Oh, we get a cut into it like so. I'm going to put some syrup on it. Because nothing like sweet syrup and little pancakes. Mm -hmm. They dip it in like so. And just, just slide it in. That's right. I'm just going to slide it in. Woo wee. Bon appetit. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Let me tell you. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Chop. My granny Opal be turned up in her grave. Come on, girl, you put your foot in it. Mm-hmm. So. You put other things in it, too. Anyways, back to the quarantine pancake. Mm-hmm. 
Why don't you try it at home? Why don't you ask your mother, say, Mama, can I make some quarantine pancakes? I've got inspired. Well, thank you for joining in. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. What's up, Highland students? Man, we, we miss you guys. I know we say it a lot, but it's the truth. We miss you. And so, hey, here's what I'll do. I'll get as close as I can to let you know. We miss you. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't have any boogers in my nose. <laughs> here's a question. Here's a question. Uh, do you avoid the things that you do not like? Do you avoid the things that you don't like? And you're going, duh, Kenny. Uh, of course, I don't. I don't like run to or try and like you know participate in the things that I don't like because I don't like them. Kind of a dumb question. Well, hear me out because then we have to think about well, what are some of the things that we don't like that we avoid? Like when I was growing up, I avoided at all cost. Um, vegetables, hate them, hate vegetables. My grandmother used to make string beans, but out of the can, oh my gosh, gross. And here's the deal, so we would have to sit at the table until we cleared, we finished our plates. And I would sit at the table for hours and sometimes the stinking dog wouldn't even eat the vegetables. And so we were just stuck. Right? So what do I do today? Well, I would say when I had the opportunity, I avoided vegetables because I hated them. I didn't like them. I did not want them. I did not like them. Sam, I am no green eggs, no ham. Well, I'd eat ham, <laughs> but no vegetables. And so again, some of the things that we don't like, we avoid when we can. Another thing that I was thinking about, which it's kind of gross, but I'm gonna go here anyways. Um, I don't like picking up dog poop. I hate it. So when I was, again, when I was young, whose chore do you think that it was to pick up the dog poop? This guy. And so when I got older and had my, a dog of my own, when I got married, when we had kids, <laughs> guess what I did? I didn't like it. So what I, I avoided it. You know what I did? I made it a chore for our kids. <laughs> so I didn't have to do it because let, let's just be honest. When I remember when I was growing up and I had to, you know, pick up the dog poop, like I'd go out there and like literally the whole time that I was out there picking up the dog poop, like I was dry heaving, like, you know, like when you throw up but nothing comes up, <laughs> it was sad. My eyes would be watering, um, didn't like it. So when I could, I avoided it. But we have to like, in those just like vegetables and dog poop, like one is harmful, like harmful for your esophagus and you know, the way you look, especially if you know, the people that you know, think you're cool or watching you pick up dog poop and you're over there dry haven. It's harmful for your, um, you know, your social, you know, status. <laughs> Don't pick up dog poop when people are watching. Um, but vegetables, vegetables are actually, they're good for you. Like they're healthy. Like you should be eating vegetables. So some things that we avoid because we don't like them, some of them are harmful and could ruin our reputation. Some of them are good and healthy and we probably, we should. Here's the crazy thing. Sometimes we could apply that whole concept of, you know, um, avoiding things that we don't like uh, to scripture. Depending on where we're at in our lives, you know, we can take like today, you know, going through this, COVID-19 and shelter in place, like nobody, nobody likes it. I mean, like across the board, I would say there is nobody that likes, you know, the place or the situation that we find ourselves in. Like it, you know, for again, a lack of a better word, like it sucks. And so we try to avoid the answers in how we should respond to this thing that we don't like. And I would say the answers that I would look for and you probably too would be in scripture and so what do we do because we don't like the answers that we would get <clears throat> from truth you know God's word is 
what do we, we avoid it. We avoid it. Because like, let's just be honest. We want it our way. We want to do it our way. We want the things that we like and that make us happy and that are fun and that are you know, awesome and thrilling and all those other kind of things. That's what we want. But in, in hard times, like we want the things that we want too. And sometimes like we want to be mad and we want to be angry and you know I just like all those negative emotions and and emotions aren't bad like we have emotions so we can actually feel but when there's an answer when there's a direction when there's a course that we could read and get from God's Word then maybe we should also apply that too and again when we're going through tough times like we don't want to do that we don't like the answers that we'll get and so we avoid it but today guess what <clears throat> we're not going to avoid it we're going to actually um, pick up in, in God's word and in James we're going to be reading in James and it's in chapter one and James is a brother of Jesus like you know this guy has seen his you know a uh, fair amount of hard times like you know he traveled walked like he'd known Jesus you know ever since he was kind of born you know and I'm pretty sure you know tripped him and beat him up and all these other kind of things and come to find out um, <clears throat> he's the son of God like the savior of the world and so James having seen J Jesus grow up and you know become you know God incarnate you know here living on earth like he saw that stuff he went through struggled through you know all of those things and was able to kind of write about it and drew perspective and So we're going to pick up in, in, in James where James has some, some words that, like in tough times, we don't like to hear them. Uh, and so we would avoid reading James 1 during tough times. But it's like vegetables. It's so good. Like the words are so good and they're so beneficial for us, especially during tough times, that we kind of have to just step through or push through that not liking it and just eat the green things <laughs> so let's check out what James has to say in uh, the first chapter James chapter 1 verse 1 it says this James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations greetings are we in a Star Trek movie <laughs> no <laughs> greetings salutations no I just thought it was weird, but he greets them. Okay, back to what James is saying. Verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. <clears throat> I told you you weren't going to like it. <laughs> okay, so James is saying, all right, so when you're going through many trials, you know, which could be anything, it doesn't make a difference what the trial is, but James is, going, is saying when you're going through whatever trial you're going through, uh, consider it pure joy. <laughs> uh, no, James, uh, I don't want to consider it pure joy. I don't think that what we're going through, this hard time, overwhelming, the uncertainty of the situation that I find myself in right now, um, not being able to hang out with my friends and see my relatives, I, I don't want to consider that uh, joy. I don't feel like being joyful. I don't find joy in that I feel if we're honest like I feel like I'm being robbed you know some of you are, are seniors and you know you're not walking there was no prom there's no graduation um, some of you are feeling the the disconnect of being and hanging out with friends and relatives and you know <laughs> some of you are feeling the weight of you know your moms and your dads or whoever you live with you know being your you know your teacher and your principal all wrapped up in one there's no joy. There's, there's no joy in that. Like, if we're honest, like, it's hard. But James is saying, consider it pure joy when you face many trials. Interesting. Like, this is one of those pieces of scripture where I would say, nope, don't like that. I want to be stuck. I want to... Uh, be mad and angry and pout and you know have a pity party and throw a fit and you know retreat and you know isolate and do all of those things that we kind of do you know when we're feeling disconnected and things aren't going our way but James has a different perspective and I think that we can 
we can draw from it. Like he's saying, um, consider it pure joy. And and joy is not happy. Happiness is like, you know, hey, we have a double double. We're going in and out. Like I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Or hey, you know, uh, not now because we're in shelter in place and quarantine, but like, you know, when that cute girl, that cute guy walks back, you know, you're feeling happy. Not now, like I said, but happiness has to do with like things outside of us affecting how we feel. That's not joy. Joy is something that God provides. Joy is something that's inside of us, that regardless of what's going on around us, we can find strength and confidence and actually put on a smile. Okay, I told you we weren't gonna like it, but we're gonna keep reading. So verse three, it says this, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Okay, so we're supposed to know, because it says you know, that the testing of our faith produces perseverance. Faith, faith is simply like kind of boiled down, it's this, it's the confidence that we have in God. Like the confidence that we believe who God says he is and that we believe that what he said he will do, he will do. Like we, that's our faith, having confidence in that. And so when things outside, like hard times come and it tests our faith and let's just, again, let's be honest. This is testing our faith. Like going through this, some of us, me too, are going, hey God, um, where are you? You know, why is this taken away from me? Or why are there people dying? Or we have all these questions and, and we come to the conclusion sometimes that God's very far away or he's not in it or he doesn't care. And that's not, that's not it. When we're going through hard times, God's there. He's in the messy middle. He's right there with us. That's why he sent his son to live here on earth, to experience all of the hard times, just like you and I. And to take our sin to a cross and die, bury, eradicate it from our lives so that we wouldn't have to experience the punishment of it. It's crazy. So God's here. He's in the messy middle of it all right with us. Even though we can't see him and sometimes we don't feel him, he's there. He's present. And so when our faith is tested, our confidence in him is tested, James is saying like perseverance, like we got to persevere. Like we got to just kind of hold on to our faith and get through it because we know that God is who he says he is. And he will do exactly what he said he will do. All right. Verse four says this. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Okay. So now we have this pure joy thing. Hard time. Consider it pure joy. Our testing of our faith is going to lead to perseverance. And now we have to let perseverance work itself out, like complete. Like we got to get to the end of this. Like if we can have confidence that God is who he says he is, like we can have strong faith. Like we can get through this. Even though like things are going bad and south around us, we can hang in there because we have confidence in God. And if we allow, if we persevere and we, we get to the end of this, James is saying that, we become mature. It's like going to the gym and lifting weights. Like over time, if we get through a set or a workout and over time, like we will build muscle and faith is a muscle. Like if we don't exercise our faith, and that's what trials are. If we don't exercise, if we don't have anything to exercise our faith, we don't go stronger. But because we go through hard times and how we go through hard times, relying and trusting in God, having faith in him to get us through, we become stronger in our faith. We become closer to God. We become mature. And not only that, we become complete and we don't lack in anything. And so in, in our circumstances where we find ourselves right now, 
we don't want we don't like what James is saying because again um, if we're honest we want to be mad we, we want to be mad because we just feel like we've been robbed and James is saying and I think and I truly believe it's from the lips of God is that okay you can be mad but in your emotion could you not lose grip of your faith? Like you can be mad, but know that God is still God and we will get through this. You can be upset that you didn't go to prom or you're not graduating, you're not walking and all that, other, all that stuff. And I mean, yeah, that, it sucks. You can be upset and mad and angry at that, but allow this trial to test your faith. And in the testing, know that God, you have confidence in God and he will, and he is in the messy middle. And he will get us through. We'll be more mature. We'll be complete. And we won't be lacking anything. Do you know why? Because God, in our confidence in him, supplies us everything that we need. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for allowing me to share uh, this piece of scripture. Again, maybe some of us don't like the answer and what James is saying, but you know, it's like a, it's like some vegetables. <laughs> Even though don't we don't like it, we shouldn't avoid it. We should actually just take a bite because it's good for us. It's really good for us, and hopefully, the words of James encourages you to find joy in the middle, in the messy middle of your lives and our lives right now so that we can have confidence in God and we can get through this together. Hey, see you guys next week. Kenny, thank you so much for wrapping up the message. We hope that you as youth felt encouraged and your spirits were just fed. Um, just thank you so much, man. That was awesome. We're all going through it. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, and like we did last week, we always want to make sure that we have a musical element to it because sometimes, in some of us, that's how we connect most to God. So, yeah, hear that. check this uh, song out. Hey folks, Sunday morning here for me. Um, wife's out there cooking breakfast to celebrate my birthday. So, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Kenny asked me to play another song for you. So this is Reckless Love by Corey Asbury. And I hope you enjoy. For I spoke a word You were singing over me You have been so, so
quiet still I'm family you guys um, hope you know that God is willing to leave the 99 to fight for the one um, because he loves you so much he's passionate about pursuing you so bless you have a wonderful week and uh, nothing but love from the Gherkins family here and uh, we'll see you soon thanks bye man that was so great I just love music in this context I mean again I get to connect with God and yeah. so hopefully you guys were able to do that as well we just want to say thank you again for joining us this week for the week and show. So stay tuned for next week and show, and we will hook you up with what is going on and what's happening around the sphere of life. Right here in Paso, <laughs> California. That's right. So check us out next week for episode three. Peace.